there's a, a rough estimate that, you know, only 10 percent of the people worldwide who are in need of an organ ever get one. So that's 90 percent of people that don't get yeah, an that's, organ. That's a need. huge number. It's a huge number. 30 years ago, um, the sort of field coalesced around this idea that genetically modified pig organs would be the way to go. Uh, genetic modification was not uh, the, the walk in the park that it is today. Um, we now have um, much better, much more efficient, much more precise ways of um, editing the genomes of pigs. And so we can actually, even though it's in a pig, tailor make it as 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 best as possible to a human. Why, why pigs? I mean, it, they seem like such smart and kind of lovely animals. Why would we want to do this with pigs? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. I mean, if you look at if you look at primates, non-human primates, apes, for example, you might think, well, that's a more obvious choice. Yeah. They're also yeah. smart and lovely. <laughs> they're also smart and lovely. And there's this kind of the problem yeah. um, because they're too much like ourselves. Yeah. We don't tend to like it. Um, no, I mean, the very, very few, even just research projects are carried out on apes, for example. Yeah. Um, and also the sort of things that infect them, so pathogens, are much more likely to actually also want to attack a human. So if you start putting, you know, organs from chimps into people, you, you have a higher risk of um, actually carrying over an infection that could be dangerous for that person and we don't so you want don't that. Want it, you don't want the animal to be too close to humans that it could produce crossover infection spillovers essentially but also you want them to be for example physiologically the right size and pigs tend to be you know the right size in terms of organs they're around the right size they're just very similar to humans in many ways organs are not exactly the same they have slight differences in how the blood clots or uh, urine production and all of these sorts of things um, that you have to take into account but in the broad scheme of things they're pretty similar and then it should also be said that we know how to breed pigs and we know how to breed pigs on a really, really large scale. Whereas, you know, try breeding an orangutan. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's just a different ballgame. What's the process of taking an organ from a pig and transplanting it into a person? Where do you start? Well, so first of all, you the, 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 there is one overarching thing you have to keep in mind, which is that this organ is coming from a different species. You want the organs to be roughly the right size. And you also want to make sure that it works with the rest of the body in a way that's going to work for the for the recipient. And Physiologically, not work against it. it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and you also wanted to uh, not be... a rejected by the new body as, as best as you c c can make it. Rejection is also a risk in, in, in human transplants. But there's a much bigger sort of uh, alarm bell going off saying foreign when you when you get an organ from from a completely different species. You don't just take any any pig that, you know, that, that is, is bred somewhere and just find one that happens to have the same size organ and, and, and try and match blood types or something, which obviously you can't do across species. You, you have to create the pig from scratch. Yeah, you do. I mean, it should be said that for sort of more um, structural things, like uh, p people will undoubtedly have heard of or, or know people that received uh, pig heart valves, um, which is, is not the same thing. You don't need it to, to work on this genetic and biochemical level. You just, you, you just needed to, to perform a structural function. But if you wanted to give you a whole organ, it needs to be fine-tuned. Um, and so what they do is basically they, they go in um, and they take the, the, the pig genome and then they make changes to it to make it more suitable. What are scientists doing to the, or the genome of a pig to make them more, let's say, friendly to being, being transplanted into people? The first thing that they do is that they look for these um, sugars that grow on the pig cells um, that are um, really likely to set off um, a, a, a big human um, reaction. And they go in and they basically switch those off to make sure that... At the, the genome level. At the genome level to make sure that those, I mean, carbohydrates or sugars are not produced. Um, the second step is um, to put in a number of human genes that kind of produce the right signals for the body to um, to, to, to take it in, but also kind of um, overcoming some of those physiological differences that I mentioned before. So um, you want to have something that works with how the blood clots in the human body. And so you can do that by putting in genes from humans um, so the, so ready the, for donation. So the edits, first of all, R strip away things that make it make them look like pigs first of all to, to a human body mm. and then add things that make them look a bit more like human bodies mm. how how long is it before the organ from that piglet is ready to be transplanted so they want them to grow a bit because like a teeny tiny uh piglet kidney is too small for for an adult human um so usually it's between six to eight months around seven months um which is really close to when 
pigs are usually slaughtered anyway. The idea of growing animals specifically to use their organs inside people is a new use, let's say, of, of animals. And some people will find that, I mean, for lack of a better word, they'll find it icky. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting point. I have to say, uh, so personally, the whole idea of getting a pig organ doesn't faze me at all. But these pigs are born in a sterile environment and they live inside their whole lives, right? Like it, it's not, you know, there's no happy little pig on the farm, you know, putting its nose in the mud and, and stuff. But I think just the the sort of the, the, the amount of human suffering that comes from the organ shortage means that people are, even if they feel wicky about it, um, generally on board. Um, and I think, you know, it's not, I think it's worth asking, you know, how different is it really to the huge amount of livestock that's produced every day um, for yeah, food and, and not always, you know, it's it, to end suffering. Possible. Do you see a world or do the people you've spoken to see a world where these kinds of transplants just become the norm? I think it will take... Even if we presume that pig organs will end up being as good as a human organ, um, that will take a while. And so probably there will be some specific criteria for when you will um, qualify for one over the other. But it also is the case that human organs come in in different states, you know, like uh, they, they are not produced in a in a sterile facility tailor made to this exact um, um, uh, object. So it. You, you know, you can have people that have had diseases or, or whatever come in and, and, and you can get their organs. So, yeah, the, the, when you talk to people, they say, well, there is a possibility that in the future the pig organs could actually be, because they are tailor-made, um, really, really good, a really, really good candidate. But I think also people think that um, it's possible that they're not going to be the final step that there are going to be better ways of creating organs in the future. That was fascinating. Thank you very much, Emily, and uh, we'll speak to you again soon. Thank you very much.